Good morning, I'm Brian Pruitt, one of the shepherds here. And um, I want to begin by making a, the purpose of this is to talk about the mass again, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, I don't know what you think it would be like to be a, a shepherd. Um, you get some idea from it, I think, or at least I had this idea from this passage in Acts someplace uh, where um, there's some discussion going on about the, the Grecian widows are not getting served well, so they think, well, we need some deacons um, to do this. And now these are the apostles talking, and shepherds are not apostles, but, but we do have something like deacons here. And so it's kind of a similar thing. So uh, they say we should be about uh, prayer and the ministry of the word is what uh, the, the apostles say. So I always thought, you know, if I was going to be a shepherd, I was going to be about prayer and the ministry of the word. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot that goes on that has, uh, you have to make, do a little mental gymnastics to get to where ministry of the word uh, figures into what it is that we actually have to do sometimes. Uh, for example, since I've been a shepherd in the last, I guess, five years or so, we have um, installed a big emergency plan in case there was a shooter in this auditorium. We've developed uh, a lot of, a lot of thought has gone into how we manage the nursery. When we started with our, bringing our children here in 1992, we did things a lot differently than we do now. All that because now we're aware of the fact that there are people who will do perverse things to little children. Um, now we put all these things in place, not because we're afraid of these things happening, but if we didn't do it, it would just be, you know, irresponsible, right? So it's hard to be, uh, uh, to sometimes to think about and the desire to be a shepherd of the soul when we have to worry about these kind of interworldly things, but that's the world that we live in. Um, and similarly, I, I really didn't think I'd ever have to make any kind of decisions about public health policy of all things. Um, public health is kind of a, I mean, I'm a physician, if you don't know that, an obstetrician actually. Um, uh, and public health is kind of a murky pseudoscience to begin with. And then if you add policy to it, then you get all kinds of stuff that comes with it. You know, who knows what goes on and why people think that the right thing to do at this moment is to impose this kind of rule or that kind of rule. And it's at risk of being politicized, which we are all unfortunately very familiar with. So, but that's where we are. We're in a world where we worry about sexual perversion with children. We're in a world where we worry about shooters coming into this auditorium. And we're in a world where we have to worry about a pandemic that changes all the time. So I just want to make a few points, um, and then I'll step down. The first point is that in the past seven to 10 days, there's been a drastic increase in the number of hospitalizations in this city with regard to COVID-19, and particularly the what's called the Delta variant. Um, uh, we, got a, we weren't getting updates at Ascension, which is the uh, St. Vincent's hospitals, for several months, but we got one again this week, and that we have 87 admissions. Um, uh, to the unit, and I think 10 days ago there might have been 10. Um, so there's a big change in this. Uh, I'm an obstetrician, like I said, this week we transferred one of our patients to UAB where they've got like six or seven pregnant women that are admitted. Some of them are on what called, what is called ECMO, uh, which is where the lungs just quit working altogether. So you have to run the blood outside the body in order to, um, to oxygenate it. I'm not trying to scare you at all. I told you, we, I'm, I'm not afraid of a shooter. I'm not afraid of sexual predators and I'm not afraid of COVID-19, but they all have to be respected. All right. So there's been this great increase um, in the number of uh, cases and uh, particularly here in our city. And so uh, we are asking as you, uh, all of you, I notice uh, are aware that, that you wear masks again. Now, mass science is not real great, um, but it's what we have. It's what's recommended by government entities, and so it's what we have. 
So we recommend that you wear masks. That's point number one. Um, it's a recommendation. Okay? It's a recommendation. Point number two is that we also encourage you, if you have not been vaccinated, to get vaccinated. The point of all this is, is love of neighbor is what's driving us. This is no political thing or anything like that. We just love you guys and don't want anybody to get sick. And it's been shown that people who are vaccinated are less likely to get the virus, less likely to get sick from the virus, less likely to transmit the virus than to someone else that hasn't been vaccinated. So out of love, we ask you to be vaccinated so that you don't transmit the virus to someone else that is at risk. Um, and right now at risk, I told you about the pregnant women. This morning I got a call, well, I found out that uh, Bernie's great-grandchild, um, Jan's nephew's daughter, is admitted in Little Rock with COVID-19 syndrome. So it, it's a real thing even for the children now. So uh, in general, the children usually do fine, not been as sick in the past, but again, we don't have a lot of information about the Delta virus. So if you have the opportunity to get vaccinated, please take that opportunity. It's easy to do. The third point is, as I mentioned earlier, this is a recommendation. We are not going to be uh, mask police. If you don't wear a mask, it's your decision. You'll probably see shepherds that don't wear masks because everyone has a right to decide if they're going to wear a mask or not. We are not going to ask our teachers to police mask wearing when we start classes next week. That's not their job. If a child comes in there, if parents want to wear a mask, they wear a mask. But be aware that you might be back there with children who aren't wearing masks. So just understand that situation before you send your children back because we're not going to ask our teachers to police this. Okay? And the final point that I would make is... Uh, the, the great good that we have that we're not like the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world because we serve something higher and we serve one another in a way that's different than the world serves themselves and they serve one another. Because we've been told this great little, this great little gem from the Apostle Paul who says something about uh, keeping the spirit of unity and the bond of peace. What a wonderful injunction for all of us to keep the spirit of unity and the bond of peace. So we ask you for hopefully just a short period of time, uh, we'll reassess this soon, um, that you wear masks when you come in, you go out while you sing, the, the things that were in the announcements. We appreciate your patience in this and uh, respect each one of your uh, decision about this. Um, we're not going to make big announcements. I just wanted you to know why, why we're doing what we're doing. One of the shepherds texted back this morning. He said, this is a situation where everyone's right and everyone's wrong. So that's where we sit. Everyone's right, everyone's wrong. We're doing the best we can. We ask for your grace. Thank you.